Welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about mixtures. If you could please consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. It really will help other teachers and other students to find the videos. Um, otherwise, YouTube doesn't know what videos to recommend to people. So mixtures are made up of more than one substance. And the properties of the mixture, therefore, are going to vary depending on do we take this substance or do we take that substance when we're looking at the properties? So this bag here would represent a mixture. Let me, okay. So you can see that there are, this is a compound in here, one or more different atoms bonded together, but there's also an element in here. And so if I were to take this piece of the mixture and test its properties, it's going to have different properties than this, okay? And so therefore, it's made up of more than one substance, and the properties of this mixture are not going to be the same throughout, okay? It's going to really depend on which piece I happen to grab. So a mixture could be made up of more than one element, in a bag or in a beaker. So here would be a visual representation of it. So here we have maybe something like oxygen that binds to itself, but that'd still be an element. And this would be an element. And then we have another sample of oxygen. And then we have another sample of an individual element. Okay, so two or more elements can be a type of mixture. So that could be like, I've got iron, filings, like little pieces of iron mixed in with some oxygen gas. That would be a mixture. Or we could have little pieces of copper shavings mixed in with iron. And that would also count as a mixture of two or more elements. But what's key here is that these elements are not chemically combined. See, I don't have this orange element attached to this green element, okay? They are unique. They're still elements. It's just one or more type of atom um, per thing, okay? So we could also have a mixture of more than one compound. So here I have two compounds. I made these to represent this would be methane. So this is carbon and four hydrogens, which is what's in farts, okay? And this is propane. So this would be what's in your grill that we burn, okay? And that's three carbons and six hydrogens. They've got very different properties as a result. They're different substances, okay? So you could have a mixture of those two gases. You could fart by your grill and you'd have a mixture of two gases, okay? Other uh, mixtures would be like if you had salt and water, or if you had sand, which is a compound, silicon dioxide, and um, salt, you would have a mixture of two compounds. Okay? It could be more than that. We could have water, sand, and salt, all of which are compounds, together in a beaker, and we would call that a mixture as well. Okay, so a mixture could also be a mixture of elements and compounds together. So here's my bag representing that. Over on this side, I've got a compound, two or more different elements chemically combined, and here I've got an element. So this could be representative, maybe this is iron, and over here I've got water. There's no chemical formula written for mixtures because you would only write a chemical formula to show that, um, that it's a pure substance, that it's going to have the same properties throughout. So you can only do that for an element or a compound. The only thing I could maybe do for a mixture is write it as a plus symbol. So here I've got water, and I'm going to put some iron into that water. And that's really the only way I could like show a mixture with chemical symbols. So mixtures can be liquids, they can be solids, and they could be gases. So you could have a mixture of gases like um, two elements, nitrogen and oxygen. Really, the air around us is about 80% nitrogen and about 20% oxygen. So that's definitely a mixture of elements. Okay. There's also compounds in there of carbon dioxide as well and other, other gases. Um, here's a rock. A rock is going to be a mixture of various substances. Okay. And we can't write a chemical formula for a rock. 
Okay, um, you can also have a mixture of liquids. So I could take rubbing alcohol, which has a chemical formula because it's a compound, and I could mix that rubbing alcohol with hydrogen peroxide, which is also a compound. There's two main categories of mixtures. So when we look at mixtures, we're going to basically like split them into two groups, and then they could be subdivided further. But those two main categories are going to be homogeneous and heterogeneous. And this basically has to do with what do they look like? If it looks the same throughout, we call it homogeneous. Because this prefix, you're going to see a lot in science, this prefix means same. So if it looks the same throughout, then we would call it homogeneous. This prefix, hetero, means different. So if things look different, like you can see the different pieces, like in this rock, you can see the different pieces, then that would be a heterogeneous mixture. Whereas if I put sugar and salt together, that's a mixture of two compounds, but I can't really see the different pieces. So I might call that one a homogeneous mixture. Or if I put sugar in water and stir it up, like I'm making Kool-Aid, you know, um, you can't see the different pieces. So that would be homogeneous. Uh, mixed nuts, dirty laundry, those would be examples of heterogeneous. You can definitely see the different pieces. Other examples of heterogeneous would be things like salad dressing, like especially, you know, like Italian dressing that it'll, it'll settle in the refrigerator and you've got to shake it. So right after you shake it, it might temporarily look the same throughout. So when you shake salad dressing, like Italian dressing, it might temporarily look the same throughout, but it will settle over time. And so it, because it settles, you can then see the different pieces. And so we would classify that as heterogeneous. So hopefully you now understand the main components of a mixture. You can't write a chemical formula for it because it's made up of more than one substance and each part of that is going to have different properties. Um, it can be a mixture of a variety of other chemical words that we're used to using. And then there's two main categories and it's based on like what does it look like? Does it look the same or do the pieces look different? Have a great day. If you haven't already, please subscribe so other people can find this video. Help YouTube out and letting them know that this is a helpful video. Okay? Bye, guys. Have a great day.